Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And today we have a fun one for you. We're talking about brass. Yeah, we got a project. We've got two projects, actually, that we're going to cut. We're going to cut a little furniture identification plaque so that you can class up your maker's mark on all the furniture you build. And then we've got a really cool keyhole style plate. What's the word for that? Escuchion. Escuchion. I think it's French. I yeah, don't know. It sounds French. Correct my pronunciation on that, but we're going to make one of those later. That was actually a Can You Trace It submission. So that's a combo nice. trace brass cutting project that's going to be really fun. Um, and yeah, you know, it's the same shape or sessions that you've always watched. Yeah. Make sure that you interact in the chat, like ask us some questions, leave us comments. We read all the comments at the end of the show. Um, Ted's going to be in the chat forwarding those questions to us to do a live Q and a at the end of the show. And we've got giveaways. Of course we have giveaways. Um, you may have seen us cut brass on the show before. Uh, but we've never done one exclusively about brass, so this is more, you know, so we had a place to direct people when they're like, wait, Origin can cut more than just wood? Yes, it can cut more than just wood. Anything non-ferrous, so that means brass, copper, aluminum, no steel, no stainless. Get that out of your head. Yeah, no iron. No iron. Anything What's that needs a liquid coolant or should have a liquid coolant to cut, <laughs> stay away from. Yeah, uh... <laughs> So we're going to cut brass. I mean, yeah. you know, people are rolling into the show. People kind of trickle in over the first five minutes or so. So maybe we kill some time and do the engraving first. We've Fun. got a lot of brass cutting to do. So do. let's do this engraving um, and let people kind of roll in here. I am using 16th inch thick brass sheet today. Yeah. Not too thick. Um, but it doesn't really matter necessarily how thick it is. This is, I want to say we got this from McMaster. Yeah. Good I wanted place. to ask you where you get your brass, because yeah. I think people are going to ask that question a lot. Yeah. So is there anything special about this brass that we order? I'm going to turn that question right around on you. Uno reverse card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is 360 alloy brass, which is known for being exceptionally machinable. Mm -hmm. um, there are different brasses for different purposes. Some are more suited for forming, like stamping under a press. Uh, this brass is more suited for machining. Other brasses are like super corrosion resistant for marine grade use, that kind of thing. But 360 brass, I really especially like for cutting with origin because it's nice and soft, but at the same time, it forms really nice chips. Uh, the chips are the part that kind of get cut away as you go, uh, the metal equivalent to sawdust. Yes. And McMaster car is great uh, for industrial supply. Uh, a lot of you folks might have a metal supplier in your town or city that is a little cheaper, but we love McMaster car because you always know what you're going to get. And for us, it always shows up the next day. <clears throat> yeah, it really does. It's magic. I don't quite understand how they make it work. Okay, I'm setting up a grid right now. There we go. I'm making that grid a sixteenth of an inch. That's going to make sense more in a second. In a minute. Okay. And that's just a center line grid? What kind of grid is that? That looks like it's in the middle of the brass. That's a Yeah, that's. I guess you'd call that a center line grid. I didn't move origin. I just clicked the probe button three times mm -hmm. because I don't actually, I'm not trying to probe off the edge of my material here. I just want a grid so that I can place relative to it. Okay. It's like a lazy man's grid. This is all going to make sense shortly. So you're going to pull in this design. I should probably sign in. Oh, boy. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Top secret. Me. Security first. Um, this is a live show, so bear with us here. We always have something come up. Um, but the cool thing about that is that you get to see how Origin really works in real time. All right, now let's import JS plate. And I'm going to place it right there. Sweet. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a rounded rectangle with a tracing, a trace drawing. And so it's basically a template. I'm going to go ahead and put in the date for the specific piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. um, should we go ahead and do that now? Yeah, let's do that. All right. This is all a studio design. And I'm going to add it to it with the text feature. Let's say August. Today's the 17th. 17th. Of course, we're going to change that to be something more like 
0.2 is a little big, so let's do 0.15. A little small, 0.17. I like that. I'm going to use that bottom middle anchor, and this is why I adjusted my grid to be a 16th of an inch. So I'm more or less centered in this area. I'm just going to go up a 16th. There we go. Create again, text basic. Say 2023. Scooch down, but now we're using the top middle anchor instead of zero, going a sixteenth down. So that just gives us a nice spacing. Cool. So now I am ready to engrave. I chose to use uh, Origins on tool font um, because it's a nice single line font, and it's also I can make this for each piece of furniture that I release. Yeah. Uh, and we can talk more about that studio design in a second. Uh, let's just cut some stuff. Let's just cut. All right. I have a 90 degree engraving bit, so I'm going down 0.01. Let's let it ride. All right. One of our favorite uses for Origin is this finely detailed engraving. Um, what Origin allows you to do is, you know, just kind of get the router in the vicinity of that engraving that you want to make. Especially on smaller engravings like this, you can use auto mode to cruise through without even hardly moving the router. And it goes and cuts straight on that template for you, which is incredible. Um, you know, for folks that are new to this show, like to do a little description. Uh, as we go through later, you're going to see we're going to make kind of bigger movements with Origin to cut this furniture tag out. And when we do that, Jake's gonna be following a line and Origin is going to be auto-correcting as he moves, keeping the center of that spindle right on the line. Um, the engraving is one of those things that we kind of recommend that everybody start out with. Our favorite demo is just engrave your name. And engraving, even if you're a more advanced woodworker who's making bigger projects like a chair or a table, it's really nice to be able to engrave your maker's marker, your logo, in the bottom of that table, say, for instance. Especially with Trace, you can take your signature, uh, convert it directly to one of those digital templates, and engrave it on any piece that you make. We've been having a lot of fun lately uh, making engravings, custom engravings on the spot for things like cutting boards, quick customization. Uh, check out Instagram, I think, coming up soon for a quick reel on that that Jake made the other week. It's just a ton of fun. In this case, we're taking this brass and, uh, you know, while I'm off screen here, I'm going to grab this piece that we put together earlier and we're just going to put that in a, you know, the stretcher of a chair. We were working with the CJ3 stacking chair that Caleb James made instructions for um, and we thought, you know, what better way to personalize it with a little signature and the date that it was finished. Perfect. I can't slide it over, but we can hang on for oh the boy, ride. We're moving the camera. Can you actually see that? It's shiny. There it is. There we go. Contrast. All right. So super happy with how that engraving came out. Um, I like that 90 degree engraving bit for the for brass. Yeah, because you don't have to go so deep, but it still gives you a nice, um, nice shape. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about all our settings and all the super nerdy technical details later. Yes, um, we just wanted to talk about design for starters, some of the things that you can make with brass. So let's look at that studio template that we made using your trace, uh, your signature yeah. trace. Yeah. So I've got that pulled up on the laptop over here. There we go, and. Um, this is studio. So what are we looking at here, Jake? We were just looking at a nice rounded rectangle. Could be really any shape. Just decided to go for a rounded rectangle. We imported the trace directly from the trace app. Mm -hmm. Placed the whole thing centered on that tiny red triangle, which is a custom anchor point. That's what helped me place that on tool text later on. Mm -hmm. And just gave, my, gave a semicolon just to give 
just pizzazz. Yeah. Um, custom anchor points in studio are relatively new, not brand new, but relatively new. There's something that people have been asking for for a while. And the beauty of studio is that we're always working on it and always improving it. So we delivered. We've got custom anchor points for everybody. Yeah. Um, and now you can use those to place your files. Yeah. The difference here is you're actually building your thing around the custom anchor point, and that's in a set location versus putting your custom mm -hmm. anchor point on your piece. Yeah, simple way to do it. Just yeah. leave it at the origin point. Exactly. Now, did you go through the plan and review process for this one, Jake? You know, I didn't. But we could look at that. So it is already on, uh, not actually all on online cuts, that studio cut is because it's a central line. Uh -huh. But we're going to take these and make, uh, let's see, we want this guy. I want both those to guy, be inside. This guy. You want the colon to be inside? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take these and make them inside cuts. We're going to take these. Those are already online cuts, and we want this to be an outside cut. And we can preview this whole thing by selecting all and making that bit diameter nice and small, 0 0.02 engraving bit. Pop over to review mode. And you can see approximately what that's going to look like, very close to what that's going to look like when you cut it out on Origin. And the nice thing about this now is that you have that template, like Jake was talking about, that you can add the date. So, yep. you know, your signature is not changing much over time. The date's going to change over time. Yeah. And it's not going to be August 17th forever. <laughs> this could be as intricate or as simple as you want. Um, and let's show off what this yes. is going to look like. Once you know, we it's cut funny. It for you. Second time around, I'm actually much happier with the engraving. But this is the idea: nice flush plate on the inside of a chair stretcher or something, mm -hmm. something that where if a customer were to lift up your piece and see that, it would just like elevate that piece of furniture even further. It's a very professional touch. Pop quiz, Jake. How much extra do you think you could charge for this? Uh, specifically for that, nothing. But for the entire piece, probably an extra grand. <laughs> yeah, not for this stretcher. <laughs> so let's show off a couple extra uh, fun things that we made with brass in the shop recently. Yes. This was also with brass and trace. This was a super fun one. This is a branding iron. So kind of another way to approach that branding question. Um, made this with brass, hit this with a propane torch, heat it up. Um, I think when we did this, one tip that we found is if you spritz water on your piece first, it tends to only burn where it contacts and uh -huh. not kind of that surrounding area just from the heat. So that's a helpful tip. I also want to just show, if you can see it in the reflection, or it, if the light catches it right, these tool paths are just awesome. Yeah. So one tip for brass, and we'll talk more about process for brass later, but one tip for brass that I like is uh, using offsets instead of pockets right. for brass. So you need to clear out a lot of material there. Instead of just going at it loosely like a pocket, mm -hmm. you got a little bit more structure. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your settings, your feed rate, your spindle speed, all of that stuff as consistent as possible, along with the amount of material that you're removing. You want to keep that as consistent as possible with brass so that you don't grab or snag, um, because it is harder to cut than wood. So that's why I like offsets rather than pockets, which can go from a very small cut to a very large cut really quickly. Yeah. All right, we've got this keyhole plate, and we actually did like a whole half a session on this keyhole plate before. You can find that under sessions.shapertools.com. We did keyholes two ways with our new T-slot router bit at the time and this in brass. So you could use this to hang all kinds of stuff. Yeah, this, you know, there's, there's, there's people out there that sell this kind of hardware, but this is way cleaner than anything I've seen on the market. Uh -huh. Make it yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, brush my shoulders off over here. <laughs> <laughs> Worth noting, too, that we use that 90-degree engraving bit to get this beautiful chamfer. Yeah, exactly. So you can use a flathead screw on those and get a perfect flush fit. All right, this is another trace project. I'll add that that keyhole was designed completely in studio, and we show you how to design that in studio on that session if you go back to it. Now, this is another trace project. Yep, this is just the lid of a nice uh, dovetailed box. But just a, you know, fun infinity symbol. It's supposed to be a jewelry box. Note that um, when we drew the infinity symbol, we made sure that all our radiuses were at least large enough to fit our eighth inch uh, brass routing. 
mm -hmm. bit that we're going to use in a second. Mm -hmm. And this one is not exactly brass, but it kind of is foreshadowing of something that we're going to work on later. So we made this wooden backer plate for this keyhole thing. Uh, when we were seeing what we could use trace for, all the myriad things you could use trace for. And I think that would be really cool to make out of brass instead of wood. We just traced that door handle plate, gave it an offset, and cut it out of wood. Absolutely. And think about how beautifully it would weather, it would weather with like the bronze with face. With this, yeah. That would yeah. be really fun. Um, cool. So those are some things you could do. What do you say we cut this out? Let's cut it out. Let's make like a real heavy cut in brass. Let's use that O-flute router bit. We have the eighth inch by quarter inch O-flute bit, which is specifically made uh, for brass. Do you have a T-wrench? No, I don't. I can go get one. Please. All right. I had one. And now it's gone. I'll tilt this back just a hair. Look good? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Merci. All right. Just want to show that 90 degree uh, engraving bit off. It's not. Whoops. We're a little off there. There we go. A little stubby. Super strong router bit. That's not going to have any deflection. And this is what's going in there. Mm hmm. Again, nice stubby O flute. We like stubby when it comes to brass because it means no deflection. Yeah, so the router bit that comes with Origin is an eighth inch by half inch router bit, I think, right, Jake? Yep. Um, and it's been a long time since I took my mechanical engineering courses, but I think the stiffness of a router bit is like a cubic function with the length. So if you double the length, it's eight times less stiff. Wow. That's off the cuff. Fact check me on that. But that is to say that the length of the router bit has a big factor to play in the stiffness of it. Totally. Wow. Okay. Cool. Uh, how's my origin cam look before I dive into this? You nice. could go up a little bit, maybe zoom in a smidge. We are also not changing router bits for the rest of the show. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that spindle. <laughs> Getting a little shaky cam here. There we go. Hope everybody took their drama mean. <laughs> okay. Our overall thickness is, like I said, about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to do 0 0.07 just to go a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And you're using auto pass for this, right? Absolutely. We're using auto pass. We don't need to go that crazy small. But I do want to do it in three passes total. Mm -hmm. We're going to take this depth, uh, max depth per pass of about 0 0.03, 0 0.035 is okay, with, with an offset. I feel like I can adjust that offset a little bit. It's suggesting a 0.013, mm -hmm. and I'd like a 0.02. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speeds are going to be the same for the engraving. Auto speed 7, plunge speed 5. Again, we'll talk more about that at the end of the show. Well, let's yeah, get we want to do the fun stuff first. Yeah, let's wrap this out. All right. All right. All right. And for anyone who's new to Origin, and if you are new, uh, we would love to hear about it in the chat. Just uh, pop up a little hello right around here. Hey, first time here. Uh, love to hear from you all. But for anyone who's new, um, this is kind of one of the classic origin use cases cutting to the outside of this template and uh, we made this shape in shaper studio you could also make a pretty similar shape even just with the simple on tool cad that's on origin uh, but using studio allows us to really nicely incorporate that signature and what origin's doing is following along a, a calculated toolpath based on that template it does all those calculations for you all you need to tell it is the router bit that you have in the tool and it does all those calculations for you. And it's going to go to the depth that Jake has specified. Uh, he's going to take three passes around this piece of brass. One halfway through, a second the full way through, and a third the full way through, uh, removing that little bit of offset that he used to get just a nice final cut right up to the line.
And we're going to talk about this more uh, in kind of a tip session uh, section, but we're not doing anything really different with the Origin because of the brass, other than changing the router bit that we use and the spindle speed. You know, we're going to make sure that we clean the router at the end of the show, but we don't do anything like uh, put painter's tape on the base. We know people are pretty particular about little scratches on Origin's uh, base plate, but we just let it ride. I think a little bit of scratching here and there is totally okay. Uh, there are some things that you can do to help mitigate that if you are particularly picky, and we'll go through those in a bit. But we're just letting it ride. We always have here at the Shaper Shop. With brass, even more so than any other material, you do want to make sure you move just nice and slow and steady. And Jake's using that auto speed to make sure that he stays on pace for this and uh, just keeping up with that as it goes around. All right. How do we do, buddy? Perfect. Yeah, nailed it. And not too messy either. Yeah, I'm very happy great. about. Uh, let's peel it off. Let's just peel it off. It's done, right? It is done. What do you need? Handy dandy scraper. One thing about brass that I've found is that you do want to be careful peeling it up because, like, unlike wood, it will actually, like, permanently bend if you're yeah. not careful enough about peeling it up. And once it goes, it can't go back. You can try. It'll just never be exactly the same. That's nice, though. There we go. All right. If you were watching the screen closely, you probably saw every single time the corrective range turned green. It was because I was holding that auto button, and I heard you say something about auto lock, I think. Well, I wasn't sure if you were using auto to make sure that you weren't moving too fast. You know, on the finish pad, for the majority of it, I was holding auto. Um, mm -hmm. For some of the straightaways on my depth passes, I felt comfortable going freehand, but not too fast. And then for my finish pass, I absolutely w was letting Origin dictate the speed and holding mm -hmm. auto because I want that that finish, that edge quality, to be as consistent all the way around. Yeah. And uh, just like most things, even though it's brass, it is still uh, quite a lot about how you are comfortable, how comfortable you are with the material. You absolutely. Know? So if you're new to it, go slower. The more comfort you get, the faster you can go. Yeah. And honestly quite happy with the edge quality of that like if we slowed it down maybe or if we did uh, a really tiny offset we might see something better better but no i mean i think this is really good why don't you hold I'm... that edge up to the camera yeah because i think you're being a little self-critical <laughs> can't help that that's pretty good guys yeah a little farther back ned says it's out of focus that's a nice straight edge. That's yeah. all I've got to say. I'm and what I would do, um, I don't know if we have a file out or a piece of sandpaper. Not here. But what I would do if I had that piece and I wanted to really clean up that edge perfectly flat is I would put a file down on the table and just draw that edge yes. across a file. That gives yeah. you a perfectly nice, smooth edge. I think that's the best way to finish brass. Yep. Cool. Well, one down. One um, down. After the break, we're going to talk about all of our speeds and settings, everything that we did to make sure that this went as well as possible. We're going to talk about all of our tips for taking care of the router. Hint, it's not much. You don't really need to do anything, but some people want to do yeah. things. There are things you can't do. So we'll share the things. Um, and we're going to cut another piece of brass. Uh, but 
before then, we do our mid-show product announcements now, every time about halfway through, and uh, the poll question. Now, the poll question is how you enter that giveaway that we mentioned at the beginning of the show. Today, we're giving away two things, right? Yes. We're going to use giveaway both the bits that we're using today. That's the 90-degree engraving bit and that eighth-inch by quarter-inch O-flute router bit. Um, so you can make these furniture ID tags that we're doing today. Yeah. Um, the poll question is going to be, we're just curious, you know, do you own, or not own, do you use Origin primarily for personal projects or for business? Hmm. Um, you know, we do a lot of these shows, and we want to make sure that they are applicable to you. We're kind of curious if we should be doing more shows on personal projects or, like, business applications. Mm -hmm. If we showed you a thing that could, like, help you sell a table for an extra $500, is that something that's of interest? Or do you guys not sell tables, which is totally cool. We got a lot of people who are hobby woodworkers who work in their garage and they make stuff for themselves, which mm -hmm. is also great. Okay. So that's that poll question. Uh, while that's up, we do our product announcements, right? Yes. So one big one is that Trace is officially on pre-order at shapertools.com now. Get it. Yeah. Get uh, it while the getting's good. Pre-ordering on shapertools.com gets you a place in line when Trace is delivered. Um, we're expecting those. When are we expecting those now? Like November-ish? Yeah. At the latest, I yeah. think. Um, but that gets you a place in line because we've got quite a few ordered and more orders are rolling in, which we're really happy about. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that Jake and Sean are going on a trip going to be in austin uh not this weekend but next uh we're going to the texas woodworking festival uh it's a s saturday sunday show uh we're going to be at booth 44 right in between rubio monaco and walrus oil that's a good place to nestled be. right that's in gonna between. smell good that's ah, gonna smell great <laughs> <laughs> um so if you have any austin tips any things the guys should do while they're there evening activities send them our way we'd love to hear yeah. them we're going to be in austin again later in the year so i'm that is true interested in austin fun stuff as well i will you can find me in barton springs swimming around yeah there we go <laughs> uh perfect let's see i mean that's really it so we could probably pull that poll question down and roll into our shop tour what do you think let's do it okay so our shop tour today is from dave in illinois and he sent us a great video so let's see it Gonna watch intently. Hi, this is Dave. Welcome to my shop. So I just wanted to give you a quick around the what the shop looks like. It's a 20 by 20 uh, attached garage to my house, and way too much, too many machines in in one small space, but I still make two. So you can see a big presence of cabinets with wheels sorry i'll go around again from the middle so you can see a little more you can see my the sanding station over there and now the chop saw and table saw with uh hoses coming out for dust collection and and laser exhaust and of course clamps uh this drum sander the Shaper workstation storage under my planer, two band saws, lathe, router table, and a Festool sanding station, and another sanding station, and then Festool storage. On the utility bench, there's a sliding doors, the slide posts to the left and the right, and then storage behind them. Since my garage is attached to the house, I have several dust collection. This one is my primary one for the bench. It's got two different feeds, one for the, the bench and then also for a floor unit. The table saw slides up underneath the chop saw table to get more space and slides out so I can get the full 36 inches. Under the table saw, there's another dust board exchange. One goes to the table saw and then the other to a four inch line that's used for all of my other stationary tools. The Shaper Origin workstation and accessories are all stored under my planer. 
and then on the other side of the planer is a small portable joiner. The laser stores underneath the outfeed table of the table saw. This is the back of the uh, table saw outfeed table slash laser table, storing the air assist and electrical connections. The laser is all set up here for use. It was stored down below here, and the exhaust hose goes through the table saw and out to the to a dryer vent on the outside of the garage. Another portable Festool dust extractor, which is used for sanding the shaper origin and the lathe. The sanding station with dust collection is controlled by the rope for each different machine. These cabinets are used for Festool storage, router bit storage, and other accessories. The adjustable height MFT is used for bench clamping, the shaper origin, a Festool track saw, and a Festool cyst pack. Because all the cabinets are on casters, it takes about 10 minutes to get the car in and then to also make the shop. Thank you for watching. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. Thank you so much for sending that. Awesome yeah. shop. And you know what? I stand by this. You can never have enough clamps. Yeah, I That's agree. The one, one thing. Um, if you would like to share your shop, and we would love to see it, send your shop tour to sessions at shapertools.com. You can share that with a Dropbox link. That's been working really well. Uh, we prefer landscape orientation, horizontal, uh, narrated, three to four minutes long. That's what we're shooting for. Yeah. And um, when we play your video, we'll send you something nice. Um, I forget exactly what we sent, Dave. We've been emailing, but it was either a router bit or a swag pack or something like that. So not bad, I've got to say. <laughs> Speaking of user submissions or reader submissions or viewer submissions, we've got uh, the return of Can You Trace It? Yes. Can you trace it at shapertools.com? It's yeah. the email. So if you want us to trace something before you have your trace, just send it to us and we'll do our best. Um, so I'm going to read this email because I think it's fun. This is from Glenn, who watches a lot of sessions, I know. Uh, Glenn says, the attached images are from Volume 3 of the Essential Series Shop Drawings of Shaker Furniture and Woodenware by Einar Handberg. These are from a tall clock circa 1805 from the Shaker Settlement in Waterville, New York, near Albany, still there as a museum. I can imagine cutting the escutcheons from brass with origin and perhaps the clock hands from tin or steel as well. We'll say no steel, tin's okay. Uh, the lettering for the clock face could be done with Aura Mask. All reasonable candidates for a trace. And we agree. So we traced them. Um, let's go to the overhead cam. We can show off these drawings. I think these are kind of fun. The hard thing about these is they look like scans or photographs from a book, so they're kind of gray. Um, these are the hands and some face markings, Roman numerals and numbers. And then on this side is those escutcheons. So what we did to up that contrast is traced a few on this um, on this nice tracing paper. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see that okay, Ned? Yeah, okay, so that's great. So we've got a hand over here. We've got an escutcheon over here. It was going to be kind of a lot of tracing, so we just did two, but you'll get to see how this works. So let's give this a shot. Love a nice white background. We're going to drop the trace frame on that. And give me a second to pull up the phone here. Mm, okay, I think we're all set. Okay, so we've got the trace app here. We're gonna pop that over the trace frame. You can see that it turns black and white when it's ready to capture. I'm gonna hit that button to capture, and bam, there is a cuttable vector. Done, I'm not gonna save this one. We're going to capture the other one because that's the one that we're actually going to cut. So we can just hit start a new capture on that phone. I drew this one over by the corner so it's kind of funny, but we can go back to the phone here, capture, and Perfect. there we go. Um, let's see what center line looks like, just so I don't have to delete parts from it. I'm yeah. going to send you a center line. I like it. So we will save to my files. We'll say... Spell is crucial. Oh boy. E-S-C-U-T. <laughs> Ooh. Is there an S there? I don't think there is. There's definitely an accent somewhere. Uh, okay. Somebody tell me if I got that right or wrong. That should show up 
on Origin. Let's go over to Origin and then watch the magic. You know, I wonder if this is actually going to work. <laughs> I kind of want to. I'm going to send you the outline also, just in case, Jake. Okay. And this is a little bit rotated, but since you've got a nice big piece of brass, that's not going to matter. Yeah. So you're going to send me the outline. I'm going to send you the outline too. Nice. Because the center line is really so much better for engraving. It is. It's definitely meant for engraving. That's okay. Is it? Nice closed paths? Oh, uh, we're going to do the outline. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Save. Got it. Yeah, two. I saved that. Okay, perfect. Rotate. Place. There we go. And, you know, we could have cleaned up those extra lines on the Trace app or even in Studio. Not that Studio is definitely not required for Trace. You could clean it up either way. But it's easy enough to just pick the line that you want on Origin. Totally. And when we're f when we're when you're physically tracing something, you want to use the outline. When mm -hmm. you're, uh, I guess, tracing through tracing paper, sometimes a center line is nice. For yeah. this instance, I'm going to go ahead and use the inside of that cut. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to turn that cut to a guide. Good and one. I'm going to cut the outside of this and turn this one to a guide. Sweet. We ready to roll? Yeah, we're ready we're to roll. Just go right into it. Okay, double check my auto pass. We've got two depth, one finish. I like it. See you on the other side. Okay, see ya. So the question is, can you trace it? And I think the answer is, yes, you can. While Jake's cutting that, I'm over here. I'm going to find some little metal files because metal files are to brass what chisels, I think, are to wood. They're going to help us finish out some of the details on this. Or, uh, you know, if we chose to finish out the details on it, then we could. I'm going to get a nice little triangular file over here. And I think we've got a square file somewhere. Jakey, blink twice if you're cutting the outline. Is that the inside there? Switching over? Okay, now we're cutting the outline. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it's super easy to change those cut types on Origin. We could have gone into Studio and uh, previewed those like we did for that identification tag. But, you know... Um, you don't need Studio to use Trace. We love using Studio because it gives you that preview, but Trace is a standalone product. It works not only for Origin, but also any other digital fabrication tool that uses SVG files. So that could be embroidery machines. It could be laser cutters. It could be uh, your other standalone CNC machine, um, like a Shapoko or an X-Carve. It could be, uh, I'm looking around at the shop to see what else we have. Glowforges, Cricut, Vinyl Cutters, uh, all of these tools take SVG files and all of these tools are something that Trace would work with. You could also use it with uh, digital design software such as Adobe Illustrator, uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. The list is really quite long. Those are some of our favorite tools. Um, our favorite favorite tool being Shaper Origin. Ned says that I spelled it right, too, so uh, escushin, so that's great. Escushin, ah, okay, Ned says it's uh, like discussion, not discussion. <laughs> so we'll call it an escushin. Jake, I don't know if you can hear that. Escushin. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're learning here, too, definitely.
make sure uh, as you're watching the show, if you've got any questions, drop them in that chat. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and we'll answer those questions live at the end of the show. For everybody watching on demand, that is later on sessions.shapertools.com or on YouTube, please. We always love more live viewers, so make sure to tune in every other Thursday. We're going to do the next one two weeks from today, um, and where you'll be able to get access to that live Q&A and to the giveaway that we do after we finish cutting toward the end of the show. Um, those We don't do the giveaways on YouTube, but we do them on those live shows every other Thursday. Sweet. Yeah, all right. Slow and steady. Was that zen or was that like... That was zen. Clenching. Yeah. No, 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 I'm just making sure. The, the keyhole, the actual center part was a little too small for me to do a roughing offset mm, um, i see but it still came out very nice enough. okay before you vacuum that out i'm gonna save a couple of these little chips because we should show off some good chips sure okay perfect all right i'm gonna vacuum this out yeah peel that up Man, this looks so cool. Yeah, let's go Origin Cam. That's pretty good even without cleaning out those corners. Even a little bit of round looks okay on that. Yeah, really happy with that. That's beautiful. That'll look great on a clock. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really fun. That's really fun. So I brought over two tools here. I brought over the triangular file and the square file. If we hold that up to the camera one more time, you can see the small corner rounds that you get from using a router bit to cut out something like this. And so you would want to use, if you really want a nice square corner, you would want to use a square file in those square corners at the top and bottom of the part and the triangular file in the corners that are less than 90 degrees inside that keyhole cut out. Nice. Everybody loves new tools. Excuse to get new tools. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that was fun. What do you say we talk about the nitty gritty? Sure. You wanna do nitty gritty or should we do a quick clean on origin? We could do a quick clean on Origin. Just a quick one. Yeah. Just so I get rid of these chips. If you're going back and forth between brass and metal, you want to make sure that you give your, your tool a good... I mean, just make sure there's no chips hiding underneath because you don't want mm -hmm. to transfer those chips to a nice piece of Douglas fir because it'll mm -hmm. work itself right into the grain. So... Yeah, it's not so much about Origin. It's about your next project. Yeah. I like to just ch tip Origin up, use that vacuum... I'm going to use the vacuum for a second, so you might want to mute me. Yeah, just vacuuming out that little area inside the base. And that is now, it. Now, pop quiz. How many of you knew that little tray was in the back there? I didn't know until, like, I want to say three or four months ago. <laughs> I've been working here for something like three years now. That is the chip tray. <laughs> and you can hide snacks in there, but mainly it's for chips. It really helps you vacuum out the, uh, you know, the motion control right. inside Origin. It, helps, it gives you another vacuum access port. Um, I've never really felt like I've had to clean it, but no. when you're going from brass to wood and back and forth, it's good to give it a once over. Yeah. Um, when you remember it's there, take it out and clean it out. But you'll notice that there is so much that we didn't do. Yeah. 
right? So here's a couple of things that I've heard folks do that we don't really care about too much. Uh, number one is blue tape on the base. So, yeah, maybe we could turn that toward the bench cam a little bit so folks can see. Um, there, there's a certain type of person who's very particular about the smoothness and care of their router base. Uh, we just let it rock, and we've never had any problems whatsoever. We make sure to brush the brass off between projects so we don't get it into, like, embedded into a piece of wood. But we don't blue tape the router base. A um, couple of scratches here and there are okay. Yeah. But uh, it is, it, it's not going to be, um, it wouldn't be the worst thing if you, sorry, how do I say this? <laughs> it's totally okay to put blue tape or You, or you can if you want to. You yeah. can if you want to. We just don't spend the time. No. Um, another thing that people do that we didn't do is sand between layers or file down between cuts. Um, there are certain people, when you're using an upcut router bit, they feel like any little burr that that upcut router bit leaves before you clean off the part finally would could scratch up the base. Um, but again, we don't really worry about it. Yeah. All of our parts usually, after getting cut, are going to get sanded. Mm -hmm. The face, just to get, you know, to redo that brushed face. Um, but we don't do it for the base of origin. No, but we don't do it for the... Um, looking over at the list of other things that we don't do. We don't really replace the base plate either. We have that on the list. Just that Gen 2 Origins have spare skid plates available. Um, but some scratches here and there are okay. Yeah. And I've never felt the need to replace one, really. It's something that we did as an option for folks. Yeah. Um, but I've never felt like I've needed to do it myself. Yeah. Maybe after generations of cutting brass metal bra or brass wood brass wood uh, you would just want a fresh base in which case you can buy one yeah mm, cool i think that's all of the tips that we didn't do <laughs> that we did that we skipped right <laughs> that over we in didn't the do well because we don't use them they're they're uh tips for a certain type of person that is a little more particular it's true than us and I that's think. Okay. which is okay which is okay um, but let's talk about the thing that we do really care about, which is all of the settings, the feed and the yes. feed rate, the auto rate, the spindle speed, things like that. Yeah, this, uh, there's a little bit of a mixture of the right way to do it and also how comfortable are you with mm -hmm. the speed and the setting. How does it feel? So much of Origin is how does it feel uh, because it's a hand operated yeah. tool. To tee that up, can I show something on the computer yeah. real quick? Because this is going to show the difference between the right way and the feel, yeah. right? Okay. So uh, let me pop off of my email here. Here we go. Okay, we're all set. Yep. So this is a Help Center article here, Material Recommendations, and Ted can share that link in the chat, but you could also find this under Shaper Support on our website. And you'll find here recommendations for different materials and different router bits. So you'll see here, if we scroll down to non-ferrous metals, for example, aluminum, brass, copper, you'll see that eighth inch O flute, and you'll see some settings here. So this says spindle speed two, auto speed four, maximum depth per pass 0 0.04 inches, which is one millimeter. And that's what we're gonna call the right way, the air quotes right way. But let's talk about a personal comfort with different materials and the Jake way, or the way that we did it today, which worked perfectly well, I'll yeah, say. Totally happy with that. Um, I was running Spindle Speed 4. Mm -hmm. I could have turned that down. Mm -hmm. But what auto speed were you using? I was using auto speed 7. And this is a really important thing to take note of. The spindle speed and the speed with which you move the tool are totally correlated. So when you bump up the spindle speed, you need to move the tool faster. If you slow down the spindle speed, you need to slow down the rate at which you feed the tool through the material. Exactly. So what you did there is you're more comfortable. You bumped up the spindle speed a little bit, and you moved the router a little bit faster. Plus, we're doing it live. Plus, we're doing it live. <laughs> we're trying not to be here all night. Um, and what depth per pass did you use? I was doing a 0 0.03. Well, like 0.035, so mm -hmm. pretty close to that one millimeter. Pretty close to that. Do you feel like you could have done a little bit more? Mm, no, that felt right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, yes, you could always do a little bit more, but uh, yeah, this felt good. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
Um, and one way that I like to think about that, if you're using different router bits or maybe you're cutting um, your final offset at full depth, so you cut 0 0.06 inches deep because that's a 16th, mm -hmm. and you cut 0 0.02 inches wide because that was your final roughing offset, right? Yep. Um, you might say, well, hey, these guys said 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 maximum pass depth. But when you're cutting just that little offset, you're not removing the full width of the cutter. You're just removing a little sliver. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I like to think about it, this is going to get nerdy for a second. That's what we're here uh, for. I like to think of it as the area that the router bit is moving through. So if you have an eighth inch wide router bit, which is about three millimeters, these numbers are going to be easier in millimeters. You've got a rectangle that's three millimeters wide and 0 0.04 or one millimeter deep. So you've got a rectangle that kind of looks like this and that's moving through the material. So let's say that's three by one, that's three square millimeters. Mm -hmm. You could also do that tall ways. You could take a pass that's three millimeters deep and just one millimeter wide or 0 0.04. I would say those should feel approximately equivalent. And that's one way to think about different depths in, in different materials when, when you feel like you might be limited by what the piece of paper says, maximum depth per pass. Yeah. And that video, too, up above is Andy talking about everything, right? Materials and cutters? I don't know who's on that one. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. Check it out via the link. Um, I've also got on here, let's see, spindle speed, auto speed, plunge speed. That's important yes, because that's that controls both how quickly the bit plunges and also the angle of the auto pass ramp. Yes. So I went ahead and bumped that way down because we want to ease ourselves into that brass. Mm -hmm. um, so what did I set it to? Five, I think. Five. Yep. Which is actually not the lowest. Not the lowest. The lowest is 2.5, which I almost never use. Right. And I did not feel origin lift at all during the plunge, which mm -hmm. is what we're going for. We want a nice, easy, comfortable Yeah, nice, operation. easy, comfortable ramp. Yeah. Did the ramp feel good? Ramp felt good. And I'm looking at 0 0.03 or so depth per pass. That's great. I think we covered it. All right. That was a great show. Thanks yeah. for joining along, everybody. Hope you learned something. And we'll see you on the next one. See you there. Bye. Bye.